Amen. I am excited about the message. Um, ready to go into the Word? You guys ready to go into the Word? Amen. Pastor, amen, 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 amen. Um, what do you think today, girl? He'll get you. Keep going. Amen. Is that all? Yeah, it's, okay. it's there. Um, we just want to remember our vets, those who have uh, yeah. served our country as, as we go into the summer. This is our first official holiday. Um, so just keep those families in prayer um, that have lost uh, prisoners of war and, and uh, those people who have served. And then our loved ones that have gone on before us. Um, I think the declaration has already been made this morning in the song, You've Made a Way. Amen. Yeah. When our backs were against the wall and we thought it was over, he made a way. Amen. Show sure did. <laughs> so today we stand naked and unashamed yeah. before you this morning. So we just ask for your prayers as we uh, talk about this um, subject, um, about marriages, about singleness, about widows, about relationships. Um, God is just um, wanting to make a way. Amen. Amen. He's wanting to do that miracle for um, each and and it's, it's, not, it's not an overnight thing. So we need you to be encouraged. We need you to go home and, and just get before God and, and just pray and say, Lord, I want it fixed. And I know the only way it can be fixed is through you. Uh, so we got to submit. we got to die. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, before we go into the Word and before we pray, I, I heard um, this morning when I got here that there was a shooting across the street. And um, a person lost their life. Did I hear that correctly? So uh, we just want to take a moment just to pray for uh, those people that were at the cash bar and got impacted because they're in our community and we care. Mm -hmm. So um, um, let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer and allow God to be God. Father, we lift Sheldon up to you, God. Um, he's a friend of ours. And all the owners over at that club, Lord, um, we love them. And they're made in your image, God. So the families that lost loved ones, we lift them up to you. That, God, you would comfort them. You would comfort them, Lord. And law enforcement, as they do what they're supposed to do, we pray that you would lift them up, Lord. Um, and as a church, let us do what we can to come around Sheldon, come around uh, those family members, come around. God, just, just to show them that as a church, we care. We really care. We really care. And so we lift them up to you. We know there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain right now. So be God in their midst, Lord. And Lord, as Katani and I, and Pastor Katani and I open this word, I'm praying that you would just um, speak to us, speak through us to help families so we can be uh, the church that you've called us to be. So as we talk about this difficult subject, continue to be God in our midst. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 So here's what's going to happen this morning. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, if you were here Wednesday night, we had promised we were going to go down a different route, but... Um, uh, we, 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 God is just speaking a little different, and so um, we're going to, there's a couple of things we need to do before we get deeper into the text to kind of lay some foundation. So um, we're in Genesis chapter 2, so go to Genesis chapter 2, and we will talk together to you this morning on the issue of naked and not ashamed, and there's just a couple of things we need to clean up from last Sunday that we need to say differently so you can hear us, because we shared a lot with you last week that we want you to um, understand. So here's what we, we talked about briefly in Genesis chapter 2 last week. Just, just brief, brief review that man is the foundation of the home. Come and repeat after me. Say, man is the foundation of the home. Man is the foundation of the home. Say it again. Say, man is the foundation of the home. Man is the foundation of the home. We notice that God created man. He created the male first. The, the earth was formless, void. All that good stuff was there. Then God did what God had to do. And one of the important things that we shared last week, that man's assignment over his abode of his place of residence was to dress it and to keep it. Now, I need you to get this in your spirit because in a couple of weeks when I use this phrase again, it's going to make a lot more sense when we flesh it out. So his responsibility was to dress it and keep it. The two terms that I use is serve and protect this garden of Eden where God had man. And so he gave the man instruction about this tree that's in the middle of the garden that creates all this conflict in a, in a week or so that we're going to talk about that. So that's very, very important. And then when man was doing what man was doing, God noticed that man was alone and he said, it's not good that man be alone. Now, here's what we said last week. The introduction or the discovery of the aloneness in man was not made by the male. God made that discovery. Come on, y'all. Say amen. amen. 
God made that discovery. And then when he saw man wasn't doing well, he introduced woman. So Tani talked about that. He brought woman on the scene and talk about the introduction of the woman when he brought the woman on the scene. So we know as, as the um, Genesis account that God caused Adam to fall into sleep. And from his side, he took a rib and he formed woman. Yeah. Uh, and we talked about he didn't take it from the foot. He didn't take it from the head. Right. But he took it from the side. Uh, so she, with the symbolism of she's a par- paraclete, yeah. she walks beside him. She's, she's here to help him, assist him. She, she also is not to rule over, and she is also not to trample um, on her husband. Amen. Amen. So look at this, bone of my bone. Go down to verse um, 22, and then we're going to segue into what we're going to talk about. Verse 22 of Genesis chapter 2 says, And the rib that the Lord took from, had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Just briefly about that. What I wanted you to hear about this bone of my bone is not saying necessarily that the woman is a part of me. But I want you to hear this as a first covenantal relationship that these two are entering into. So these are covenant terms that talks about this man and this woman now being united in marriage. Then subsequent to marriage, listen to what the text says. Verse 24 Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife or cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Come on, say one flesh. One flesh. One flesh. Now, listen up real quick. Leave mother and father and cleave to the husband. Now, here's what we said last week. Very, very important. That the man had now entered a new covenant with this woman So it's difficult to be in covenant with two women or two men. So separation needed to take place. Not that he now disowns his mother or none of that stuff, but the priority is with the wife. And the same thing with the wife. The priority is with the woman, and they become one flesh. Come on, say it again. Say one flesh. One flesh. And this is where we want to pick up. Anything you want to share about that? Then we're going to pick this up. Yeah. Um, It's it's important for us to understand uh, the marriage covenant. Uh, A lot of us, as... In today's society, we have common law marriages. We have just straight up shacking up. We have other ways that we call ourselves one. But in the eyes of God, a covenant is uh, a marriage between a man and a woman um, because that's where the oneness happens. That's where oneness happens. That's where the spirituality of oneness takes place when you have stood before for the Lord and asked and, and taking each other into a covenantal relationship. So covenantal relationships are powerful. That's how God works through and builds the oneness up in us. So if, if you want to truly experience the oneness and you love him and she loves you, then marriage, there, there, marriage really isn't an option with God because God says, I can't work in what I haven't blessed. And God has blessed covenantal relationships. Amen, 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 amen. So they were, verse 25, look at verse 25 because we're going to go to work right here. So we need y'all to to lock in with us, okay? Uh, Verse 25 says um, that, and the man and his wife were both what? Naked. And they were what? Very, very important phrase. The man and his wife were both, what's the word again? Naked. Naked and they were what? Okay, now everything we're going to share this morning about being naked and not ashamed, please understand pre-sin. You guys okay with me? Pre-sin or pre-fall, okay? So what I mean by that, this is God's, what we're going to share with you is God's intentional design for marital relationship, okay? Now, let me go here, let me go here. The reason a lot of us have a hard time living out God's intentional design is because we're post-sin and a lot of us allow that sin to enter our relationship. Come on, y'all. And we still keep it there and it makes it difficult to do what God says. So here's what we say in our marriage. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, I just can't. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. That uh-uh, uh-uh. That's what we say. Post-sin, God's design, pre-sin, pre-fall, we should do things this way. Now, a couple of things we need to clean up real quick, and then we're going to talk about this. Um, This woman and I, uh, all we know is each other. Is that a fair statement? 
Yeah, all, all we know is each other. And let me tell you what I mean by that. She was 19, 18 when I met her. Um, she was 21 when I married her. And I was 22. And now we're 25. So we've been known each other a long, long, long. <laughs> and what I mean by that, all we know is each other, right? So what that means, um, when I met her, we were both broke college students. We ain't had nothing but money to catch the bus. And then, <laughs> and everything we've acquired in life, we acquired together, okay? So we grew together. We grew together. And, and so the joke in our relationship, you leave if you want. I'm going to get half, you know. <laughs> you know, you kind of get. So we, we grew that together. And we want to say that because um, some of the things we're here, I want you to understand that you need to exercise wisdom. So I have not been married before. Katani has not been married before. And so it's a lot easier for us to walk some of these things out because we've been doing it together. Now, let me, let me explain that. The reason I want to say this is because as culture continues and grow on, you've got nowadays people that have been married and they've been divorced. Does that make sense? Okay. And so when you've been married, uh, you acquire assets in your marriage. Or if you've been single a long time, you acquire assets. And then when you come together, probably at an older age, I want, I want you to hear me say this. You've got to exercise a different type of caution when it comes to bringing your stuff together. Come on, y'all. Can we be honest this morning? Okay, don't be talking about, pastor said, if you're going to marry me, you need to give me all your stuff. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that, okay? Exercise a high level of wisdom in how you do what you do. It's easier for us to do it because she doesn't have kids outside the relationship. I don't have kids outside the relationship. But in some instances, you have a man that's been married before that has kids, right? And a woman that's been married before that has kids or a woman that owned a house and a man that owns a house. When you come together, you've got to talk carefully what's going to happen. Come on, y'all. Can we be honest this morning? Talk carefully about how you're going to handle it. If, if he leaves off the scene, what's going to happen to his kids? Or if she leaves off the scene, what's going to happen to her kids? Those are very, very important things. So I want to say exercise a high level of wisdom. Here's another thing I want to say. You can jump in any time. If he or she has a substance abuse problem... Protect your bank account. Heck, hide the refrigerator. Hide the microwave. Hide. <laughs> Do, I'm, I'm being honest, right? <laughs> Let, come on, y'all. Can we be honest this morning? Don't set yourself up for failure on this concept of oneness. Exercise wisdom. Okay? Exercise wisdom. Very, very important. We just want to share, you know, a couple of things because that's very, 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 very important. So make sure you have a, a, a solid plan on the distribution of assets if something were to happen in the relationship and you're bringing stuff to the marriage. So make sure that all works out well and that you know where you're going. Okay? Is that okay? Anything you want to share about that real quick? You good? Hide your credit cards. Hide your oh. bank account. <laughs> Hide your savings bonds because he's drinking everything up in here. No, <laughs> protect yeah, yourself. Protect it. Yeah, protect, protect it. it. Protect it. Protect it. God has been gracious to, to this woman and I. And, um, and so we, we don't have some of those issues. But that's real life. People live real lives. And make sure you handle that well. So be extremely wise in that. Now, I am not saying get a prenuptial agreement. I'm not saying that. So don't hear that. I'm not saying that. We have a strong position on that. I'm just saying have a good plan. Yeah. Okay, have a good plan going in on how that's going to happen. So now, um, next slide. If you can put the slides on the screen, I want to walk through some things that we're going to talk about. Um, I want to begin um, with the importance of transparency in a relationship. And uh, I'm going to ask, you don't know I'm going to do this, but I'm going to ask you for your permission in a little while to share something before I do. Okay, I'll ask you for permission so I won't surprise you. Okay. So transparency, tell us what transparency is, Pastor Katani, and let's talk about transparency. Come on, repeat out to me, transparency. Transparency. Now here's what that, let me say this, you got to be open in your relationship. Open, open, open. Open. Pre-sin, okay? Open. So let's talk about that. This is where we want to hang out today for a few minutes. So transparency is, um, it really is naked and unashamed. I believe, you know, when we read, when we read that scripture, we think of physical nakedness. 
um, and they were physically naked, but they were transparency. There was a, a nakedness within their souls, within their relationship with each other, that they, they knew each other. They knew, knew each other. They, they, had, um, they had been together, and they knew each other. So transparency to me um, really is um, shown in the Trinity when God says, let us make man. You see the oneness of God. You see the Father. You see the Son see the Holy Spirit, and they, there was a oneness. No one tried to usurp the other. They, they worked in sync with each, in, with each other. And I believe that in marriage, God is wanting us to know each other like that, know each other from the depths of our heart to the soul, uh, that we, we, we know each other so well that, that we, we can you know, understand when someone's not having a good day. We can see each other because with transparency, Transparency and intimacy, they equal each other. They, they, they mirror each other. And so when you're transparent with your spouse and they know everything about you, you put it out there, then, then it, it, it's equal in your intimacy because there's no, nothing that you're taking to the bedroom. There's nothing that you're hiding from each other. And when you're transparent with each other, you grow in intimacy with each other. And that's what God is saying, that he wants us to be transparent in our relationships in our marital relationships, he wants us to be intimate in our in our our relationships. Because if we're hiding something, if we're holding something back, or we're afraid to, then the enemy can have a foothold. Amen. So listen to this: you can't build a meaningful bond with your spouse or your significant other if you're hiding part of yourself. So listen to what number one says: transparency in marriage it means having the courage to have the tough conversations so that you both can solve problems together as a team. Very, very important, okay? Having the tough conversations, and I think I have a great example, so you both can have the courage to um, have those tough conversations so you both can solve problems. Now, here's a critical thing. It takes two in a relationship for the relationship to work. Come on, say amen. It takes two. The reason Katanya and I are still together, she was willing to work on it. I was willing to work on it. It takes two to work on the relationship together. So here's some of the things we say. Transparency then, it's a tool to strengthen your relationship. Okay, it's a tool. Come on, say transparency is a tool. Transparency is a tool. Say it again. Say transparency is a tool. So listen to this. It's a tool that we use to help us honor God through right living and we honor God when we love and honor our spouses, and we glorify God when our lives are proof of his holiness, goodness, and utter consistency, okay? Transparency traces back to the heart that seeks to gladly honor Jesus by being the person he calls us to be. Very, very important that we be open. So it is a tool, and I'll give you an example of that in a little while. What do we mean by that? Go for it. Yeah. Transparency is, is devoid of self. Yeah. So you can't, you have to remove yourself out of the relationship. You have to uh, become one. You can't, you can't, um, you know, always put yourself first. It's not self-interest. It's not self-assertion. You have to, you have to die. You have to die to, to flesh um, and know when you come into this relationship, it's not about you. It's not about what I can gain, how I feel, but it's, it's oneness. Yeah. Look at the second one. Transparency requires two sides of trust, okay? Um, it requires two sides of trust. Let me tell you what we mean by that. Um, here's what happens in a relationship. A problem happens, trust breaks down, and here's what he or she says. I don't trust you, okay? And, and here's the problem with that. Now, there's nothing wrong with not trusting the individual, but for, for, if you're going to say to a person that I don't trust you, you yourself have to be trustworthy, Come on, y'all, okay? And, and here's what that normally means. When a person says to a person, I don't trust you, I'm going to be bold enough to say it normally means that we're not willing to release or to forgive a person for something they have done. Y'all quiet now, okay? If I'm going to learn to trust, I must forgive. So here's the thing. If Katani wants me to be trustworthy, she too must be trustworthy, and we must have trust of each other. She can't say, I don't trust you, and then expect me to trust her. We've got to learn to do that for each other. Does that make sense? Okay. Very, very important. There's two sides of this. And um, let me see if I want to read, because I don't want to miss nothing of this. So it takes two sides. Now, here's what this says. Sin and hurt can cause brokenness, which can take years to heal before trust can even 
um, begin to be rebuilt. Transis transparency is the first step in healing if you're hurting. Transparency, forgiveness, prayer, and time will all help rebuild trust in a damaged relationship. So if I hurt her, for the relationship to begin to rebuild, for her to trust again, she must, first of all, forgive me. Well, number one, I've got to repent of the hurt I did, and she must be willing to forgive me for the hurt that I caused. Come on, y'all. Let's talk about this, okay? Here's what my wife can't do, and here's what happens in relationship. I'm watching you. And everything I do is measured through a lens. Come on, y'all. That, that, that'll take us nowhere, and it'll be difficult to rebuild. So what we're saying, if it's a tool, if, if she forgives, that means she has to learn to trust again, and I now must be trustworthy. Now, fellas, listen to this, and this is male and female. If I expect her to trust again, I now have to initiate transparency. Amen. Brothers, y'all just real quiet. Yeah, I have to initiate, okay? So that means my life now, guess what, becomes an open book. Oh, wow. That's what we were saying last week. She knows all my pins. I knows all her pins. She knows all my passwords. I know all her passwords. She knows my bank account. I know, you kind of get where I'm going. Open book, open book, very, very important. And the last one, there's a multifaceted truth associated with being transparency. Listen to what the Bible says in Mark, and then you can talk about this, then we're going to keep shifting. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they're no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. It takes very, very important. Anything you want to share about that before we shift to the next one? Yeah, um, in, in when creating transparency and, and seeking to be transparent in with each other, um, it brings, it's an honesty. I mean, you have to come straight, honest before each other. Um, you know, a lot of times we don't want to have that conversation or we want to have that conversation, but we like, this is going to start an argument or this is going to be a fight or this is going to yeah. be a, a week of silence. Um, and we have to get... <laughs> or you're going to get cut off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so what <laughs> happens is we hold a lot of things in. Um, when we don't put them out on the table, then the enemy can grab hold of them and just begin to just wreak more havoc in, into the relationship. But um, God, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, love is patient, kind, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it's not proud, yeah. it doesn't dishonor each other, it's not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. So in my younger years, of, of, um, in my younger years, this is one of my favorite scriptures. This was one of my favorite passages. So when trust was broken, when um, violation came into the marriage, I had to really just understand that I wanted to have the conversations, but the conversations were just yeah. every single time. And so I had to get before the Lord, and I had to to regain. Uh, myself and my composure and, and um, not look through the lens of myself, you know, through my lenses, but look through the lenses of God. So one night I asked God, I said, show me his heart. Show me God, because I'm ready to, I'm ready to pack up. I'm ready to move on. And I asked God, I said, you know, show me his heart. Am I, am I to stay here? Am I to be in this marriage? What, what do you have for us? Because this is not what I signed up for. And as God began to, to heal me and to heal my heart, I was able to view things through different set of lenses and understand what led to what, 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 what happened. Um, God just, just really healed my heart and I was able to approach it spiritually. Yeah. It wasn't in my flesh that I came through it. It was through the spirit of God. I, I always tell people it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I had to, you know, rise above the situation and allow God to heal me first. So anytime that you are seeking to better your marriage, better yourself first. Um, get into wow, the presence like of that. God. Nice. Strengthen yeah. your relationships yeah. with God because if you don't, you're going to stay in this, this continual cycle when the passage of love talks about how it's patient, yeah. how it's not easily angered, how it's not easily broke. He could walk through the door and I, get, I, would just, I would be so angry. You know? I'd hear the garage door go up and I'm just like, okay, Pray here for we go. Sister. And so, Amen. you know, yeah. those, those are the emotions and things that you have to deal with interpersonally before you try and yeah. work together. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, now let's switch gears. Go to the next slide. I want to walk through some things because we, we have a lot we want to share with you. So here's some of the dangers of the lack of transparency in a relationship. And what that means is when you're walking down in a marriage or a relationship and you're not being transparent, here's some of the dangers that will happen. Number one, keeping secrets tear down, tears down the walls of intimacy in marriage and it causes couple to grow apart, couples to grow apart, okay? Y'all ever heard the silent treatment? Folks just shut down? Okay, hear me out. We're about to be very naked with you, okay? So if you keep secrets, it tears down the walls of intimacy, and then you start doing this, okay? You ever seen couples that's been married 30, 40 years, so on and so forth, and then you go visit them, and he has his room, and she has her room? Y'all know about that? Y'all don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of that. You kind of get what I'm saying? Here's why I say to Katani all the time, girl, if anybody going to move out this bedroom, it's going to be you. Mm-mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we fight, we fight hard intentionally not to have our latter years look like that. So here's what the thing. It means having the courage. We talked about that one already to have the tough conversations. So go to the next slide. Here's some things. Here's just a couple of things. Here's a couple of things that, that um, people normally hide from their spouses. Okay, number one. That Facebook life, that can be a tough one, isn't it? Because, man, an old girlfriend will find you, old boyfriend will find you, and then you see it, and then you don't want your spouse to know, you'd be like, delete or block. Y'all acted like y'all don't have these problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's one that we had a long conversation about, past love life. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Growing up, you date people, you encounter people, you have all that good stuff. And here's the problem a lot of us make, and some of you might disagree with this, but I'm going to share it anyway. Um, Here's the mistake we we make. We go into a relationship, and we don't totally disclose, right? And so here's what happens now. You and your spouse are walking in the mall or going somewhere, and he or she shows up. Hey, Bubba. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you got these signs. Hey. You remember? And your wife's like, who's that? Oh, that ain't nobody. Come on, girl, let's go. That ain't nobody. And then all of a sudden, right? Come on. All of a sudden, the re- <laughs> you get where I'm going? Totally disclosed. Yeah, that's that girl I told you about. Let's go. Come on. (laughs) You kind of you get what I'm saying. You protect yourself if you can deal with those things because then she's prepared or he's prepared when you encounter the surprise. Total disclosure. This is transparency. Be okay with that. It's gonna hurt at first, but it's okay. It'll protect your relationship and keep it going well. Okay. Am I off on that one? No. uh -uh. I I mean. You know, we've had that, we've had that yes. situation happen to us. And so, you know, the way we handle it is we joke it. We can joke about it now. Back then, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> it, we, it was a full, full cuss out, fight, <laughs> argument. But now, you know, we, we're open enough that we can look back at it and laugh because God has healed us. But, you know, you just have to, you have to make sure those protective yeah. measures are up. Because I, years and years, like when Facebook came out, first came out and, you know, people were friending him. I was like, delete, 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 delete. Because I, I, I was like, no, no, we are not going to be having conversations. We're not opening any doors. And just like he can delete anybody off of my account that he's not comfortable with, I can delete people off of his account because I'm not going to allow, I don't know if they healed or not. I don't know. And I'm not going to, so, so I will yeah. quickly remove yeah. somebody off of his Facebook yeah. account in a heartbeat. I, I used to lie when I was younger. I mean, I'd be, we'd be going somewhere. I remember, like, go back to visit St. Croix, and I'd see an old girl calling, remember I told you about her? I ain't said nothing. Remember <laughs> I told <laughs> But God has grown us past that. Very, very important. So be careful of past love life. Uh, love life. Friendships with the opposite sex or with coworkers, men and women, be extremely cautious with this, Okay. Uh, keep those co-worker or f- opposite sex, re- sex relationship on a professional level. Come on, y'all, say amen. amen. Keep it on a professional level. Compliments can build. 
okay? And if she's at home and the husband isn't giving her attention or he's ignoring her, and every time you see it, doesn't matter what you girl, you sure look good today. Them pants are wearing you, you know. That thing will escalate into something else, all right? Be cautious and keep it at the professional level, okay? Anything you want, you good with that? Anything about sexual addictions, if you have issues that you're dealing with, open it or disclose it to your spouse. Please hear me say that. Naked and not ashamed. Don't have secret stuff that you're struggling with that you don't share with your spouse. Make sure you deal with those things. Here's a big one. Here's a, these two, you can kind of put them together, right? Um, costly money matters and, and, and saving. If you're going to... Yeah, say it again. And financial blunders. If you're going to blow it with the money... Face the, fa face the fire. Amen. Yeah, I think money is like, that is the number one argument in most marriages. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, yeah. I don't know how to put it, but it, 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 it just, yeah. it is the biggest fight. It can become the biggest fight in marriages when uh, a spouse is out and he's doing things without yeah. letting his spouse know. Yeah. And it affects he she, her financially, yeah. he or she, yeah. and it yeah. affects them financially, and then you just blow it off. Well, is it my money? I worked for it. No, that's not one. It's that selfishness. Yeah. That's you doing what you want to do. That's, that's you um, not consulting yeah. your wife or your yeah. partner, yeah. whether it's male, female, and saying, you know, I'm thinking about this, blah, blah, blah. When we were young, y'all know he got a car addiction, like crazy car addiction. <laughs> And he would come home. You are not going to tell that story. He no. would come home with car. He would come home with a new car, like <laughs> brand new car. Pull it up in the driveway. Look, oh, ain't it a beauty? Ha, da, da, yeah, yeah. And I remember one time I told him, we're taking it back to the dealership. We are taking this car back to the dealership. We cannot afford this. We don't need it. And so we took it back to the dealership. He was so embarrassed. <laughs> he was so embarrassed that we had to return it. But it was the fact that, you know, let's talk about it. You just can't go out and make right. a big major purchase. Yeah. without, you know, us knowing about it together. Yeah. Because if you lose your job, that bill falls, on, you know, then I got to ha handle all of that responsibility. So yeah. it's important yeah. that we, we, um, we watch our, our spending habits and that we, uh, you know, when it's, when it's a major purchase, that yeah. we discuss it. Yeah, that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Uh, next slide. Go to the next slide. Let's talk about this. I want to spend a moment on this. Uh, next slide. So here's the benefits, okay? Um, um, of, of being healthy. So focus on the family. That's the type of the focus on the family. Noted that in addressing couples, keeping everything out in the open is what takes away the power to create the vision. Okay? And we keep it in the open. It, it has a power to create the vision. Transparent honesty brings everything into the light and it takes the power out of the enemy hand. So let me tell you what we mean by that. Is that if I see a problem... In my wife, it's up to me not to sit on it. I need to bring it out into the open, right? If she sees a problem in me, it's not up to her to sit on it. She needs to bring it out in the open so we can talk about it, yeah. okay? Here's what the scripture says. Don't let the sun go down on your what? Rat. Right. Don't say, let me sleep on it. No, because you have too much time to process, okay? And it's going to get very... Very ugly. Now, here's something technical I want to show you. Go to the next slide. And then um, let's, let's take a moment to, uh, let me see, couples who are transparent with each other have, oh, this is a good one. When you're transparent, you have authentic relationship. And these couples, these are couples who demonstrate being one um, or being real with one another, and they don't hide things from each other. So very, very important. Go to the next one. Let's talk about this. I want to see this is this graph. Good, good. Now, can we, let me see, I need your permission on this one. Yeah, can we talk about it? Why you got to say it like that? You see how she said that? Hey, can we talk about yesterday? Come on, baby, we're preaching. You got to be, you can't do that. Not in the pulpit. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk she about it. got on my nerves yesterday. But go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, you can tell it. We can't fight publicly. We're talking about transparency. I'm not fighting. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're like, well, that's transparency. This graph here is called, it's a Jahari's window of self-awareness, right? It's a tool that's used by psychiatrists and counselors to help people have better interpersonal relationships with each other. 
okay? Now, notice it consists of four quadrants, okay? In the first one, notice what it says, known to self, and on the side it says um, known to others or unknown to others. So that one is cut off a little bit, but you can see it on some of the side screen that the, the le my uh, left side says known to others and unknown to the self, and the top says known to self, um, an unknown to self. So notice the first one cell, the open self. Here's what the open self means. Information about me that I know about myself and that others know about me. Okay? And you'll notice I even put the little Belong, Believe, Behave logo in there because that's where we want to live, that's where we want to work. So what that means, I am an open book to my wife and my wife is an open book to me. So everything about her I know and everything about herself, she knows. You kind of get where I'm going? We're transparent. The next block on the top says that there's a part of her that she doesn't know about, but I do. This is critical. This is critical. So bear with us a moment. So it says information you don't know about yourself, but others know about you. So it's called the blind self, okay? You might have heard it talk about your dark side or as a blind side. There's things in you that you don't know about you, but others can see it in you, okay? Then the other part talks about the hidden self, which is information you know about yourself, but others don't. So in other words, I have secrets, and I don't disclose them or expose them. Not good. And the unknown self says that there's things about me that I don't know, and there's things about me that she doesn't know, just like there's things about her that she doesn't know, and there's things about her that I don't know. So the last square says that as we grow together, and I found out about me, I need to reveal it. And as we grow together and she finds out about me, I need to reveal it with each other, okay? Now, I wanted to use this, for example, because that blind self is where a lot of problems start to begin in relationships, and we need to work there if we're going to fix it. And if we can understand this, we'll be all right with each other. Okay, so here's, here's a, a, a good illustration of the blind self. Let me, my wife and I, if I, this is something that happens to us a lot. I'll go to Katani and I'll say to her, man, you like to argue a lot. I'll just say that, right? And then here's what she say, no, I don't. And I want to say, but I can't be technical because I'm married. So I want to say that's your blind self talking because you can't see it in you. Right? You kind of get where I'm going? And so when the spouse... I just like to express my point. I don't, I don't consider it arguing. This ain't going to get... We ain't going to get far. All right? <laughs> but you get the idea, right? And through my lens now, I'm going to share with you something else. Right? Through my lens, I am viewing her a certain way. And here's the interesting, about, interesting thing about this I need to say. When we see people, we don't see them as they are. We see them as we are, okay? Illustration, if I love to argue, and I saw that, I'd be like, yeah, that's a good trait, girl. But because I don't like to argue, it'll rise up in me. You kind of get what I'm saying? And here's where the argument comes, is when I call it out, and even though the person can't see it, they see the need to defend what they can't see. You guys see the fight, right? You see the fight. You kind of get it? You ate that cookie. I saw you eat it. <laughs> they just think, no, I didn't. I didn't. And then all of a sudden, the argument comes. And the argument, more times than often, when one has information about the other that the other can't see. Right? Now, if all is well, if, if let's say, for example, Katani calls out something in me that's in my blind side, if we're going to be totally transparent, I don't defend the darkness. Come on, y'all. I gladly welcome it because the goal is oneness, not separation. So here's the thing. If she's seeing something in me that she doesn't like and she's calling out, and my goal is to be one with her, it's in my best interest to agree with her so we can maintain the unity. Amen. Come on, y'all. Here's how Ephesians 4 puts it. Makes every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through what? The bond of peace. So when she calls something out in me from my blind side, it's up to me to be open enough to receive it. Amen. Trust and transparency. Does that make sense, guys? 
You want to say anything about that? You good? Okay. So let me, let me, <laughs> I'm just using this. We had a little, we had a little problem yesterday. Um, every time you're going to preach, man, the devil will give you a sermon illustration. It's okay. So one of our students at church, and we'll, we'll kind of end with this. One of our students here at church graduated. We got invited to the graduation party. And so, you know, she makes that Katani tea, right? And so she made the tea and had it here at church. And um, so we left the house to come here to pick up the tea. And I'm driving. So I was up early studying. And um, by the time we drive from my house, like from Kansas to Aurora, um, I was sleepy. So we pull up in the parking lot. I open the door. She got, gets out the car and I lean back the chair and I'm like, I'm going to get me a snoozer. And then she comes back in the car carrying this tooth thing. And all I heard. Two under- five gallon jugs. Let's. Let's fill in the, yeah, we the details. Yeah, I was going to get there. And all I heard was like, what you call it, she She just said she and got in the car and slammed the door. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I did something wrong, you know. <laughs> and again, that's what I said. Hmm, I did something wrong. And so I look back, I saw the jugs. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. She had to carry those things by herself. And put them in the car. And then so when we get home at night and we're, we're debriefing because we're transparent, you know, I'm going to bring it up, right? Wait, you can't get... Before you do that, so we get to the party and then he's going <laughs> to... He's going to jump out the car and, you know, oh, let me get the jugs up because the other guys are coming to help. And he's going to jump out the car and I'm like, I know he ain't well to... You know, he acts like, let me get these jugs. And I'm like, really? I learned yeah, fast. Like, you should have put them in the car. Now you're ready to take them out. Okay, I learned so, fast. I, learned I was fast. heated. I was heated. I get it. I, I, we want to make a point out of this. So the whole way to the party, I'm learning how to fix this, right? So the moment we pull up, I got this girl. Went around and opened the car and took out the jugs and put them there. You good? He good? No, she ain't good. I can figure it out. <laughs> Here's the point I want to make when it talks about the blind self. My wife will say to me, and we're going to be transparent this morning. My wife will say to me, um, what's the word you use? Gentleman? Yeah, she says, you're not a gentleman. And yeah, she'll say that. She'll say that. I'm confident in my masculinity, so that, that's not painful for me. You kind of get where I'm going. And I'm like, then teach me. Let's be, let's be yeah. Teach me, right? So where I'm from, gentlemen provide, gentlemen I mean, I take care of this woman. She got the best of everything. I take her all over the world. I mean, since she was young, there's, she has no lack when it comes to physical stuff. But she has emotional needs that resides within here that I don't know about. And the only way I'll know about them is if she teaches me. Here's what she says. After 35 years, if you don't know by now, you... <laughs> you kind of get... I'm like, <laughs> I want to go get her. How is I'm to know what's up in your head? You know, I want to go there. Okay, now let me, let me fix this. Yeah. Let me fix this. So, for 35 years, however long you want to put it, like I will come home, like you go to Sam's or something. And That's another one. I'll, I'll have groceries and I'm coming in and out the house. Now I have asked him, can you help me with the groceries? He will wait till the last box. <laughs> To get up and help. And by then, I am just heated. I'm just like, are you serious? And so it's like, and when we've had this, this has been an ongoing argument. Um, and he, then he always says, well, just tell me. And to me, common sense says, no, no, no. If you see no. me bringing in groceries no. No. and I've made more than one trip, you need to say, baby, do you need some help? No. But he no. wants me to every Y'all single stop time. stop it. No. Y'all need Amen. to just stop. Y'all wrong. No, Amen. No, yeah. that, that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. When you see a need, then, I mean, you should just be able to fill it. I shouldn't have to ask you. Yeah. A gentleman just says, oh, baby, I got that. So My mama used to carry her own groceries. Well, I yeah. ain't your mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't your mama. <laughs> so, so, but here, here's the point. Here's where we landed, right? We had this conversation because it's important. So, so here, here's, what, here's how this thing ended for Katani and I last night. I said to her, I get that, I get that. It's obvious that you have a definition in your head of what a gentleman is. You kind of get what I'm saying? And here's transparency. 
If you walk around expecting me to fit what's in your head, the likelihood of me doing that is going to be very, very slim. Okay? Now, every now and then I'll remember and I'll do whatever. So here's what I said to her last night. Um, describe that person, that man in your head, and give me a chance to be it. Yeah, I took, man. I ain't going to tell y'all what happened afterward. Yeah. <laughs> Sister broke down and cried. She was like, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm like, who the man? Who the man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not really, really, that's the point what I'm saying. So here's, here's what I said to her. Um, I'm going to covenant to open a door because you're telling me what you need from me, the car doors, right? So when you get to the door, just stand there. And if I forget to open it, I'll see you and I'll come around. Come on, y'all. And I'll remember to do it. You get what I'm saying? Don't do this. Open the door and go and see you ain't no man. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You see what I'm saying? That'll start an argument, right? Come on, fellas. Help a brother out. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is what I said to her. When you go shopping and you come home, you just walk in the house. Hey, baby, I went shopping. The groceries in the car. And go about your business. I got you. You kind of get what I'm saying? I got you. Don't, don't, don't grab the bags and say, see, I'm bringing all the grocery in. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. That's not on. Tell me what's in your head and give me a chance to do it. Does that make sense? That's open, transparent conversation, right? Now, yeah, there you go. Yeah, call me. Now, 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 if you say, if, if you come home and say, hey, the groceries are in the car, I went shopping, and if my response is this, but well, what you want me to do about it, then you got a problem. You kind of get what I'm saying. Then you have a problem, but you don't have a problem if you do your part to help me learn you. You kind of get where I'm going. And now I'm saying that to say it's the same thing the other way. In my head, I have a perception of what a wife is. And here's what happens. Here's where the breakdown comes in transparency is when I see her doing or not doing things that my visual tells me she should be doing. It's up to me to give her the benefit of the performance by telling her what I need. Now, y'all can take that however you want. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you kind of get what I'm saying. And then give her the same thing. You, you get what I'm saying? So when we talk about transparency, because there's things she sees me not as I am, but as she is. So she has a definition. I have a definition. So, and there's going to be things about me that I can't see, the blind self. Transparency says we talk about those things. Amen. Gentlemen and ladies, y'all get this? You talk about it openly, and it keeps the room safe. Now, I want to ask, I said we want to talk about that today. We're fine. Don't, don't think stuff's crazy because we can have these candid, candid conversations without arguing, without doing those things. But those are very, 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 very important principles that a wife is, has a certain expectation of a husband. Ladies, tell him and give him a chance to perform. Come on, y'all. Give him a chance to perform, okay? Give him a chance to perform. The other way around, the same thing. Gentlemen, you have a thought process in your head of what your wife needs to be doing. Tell her and give her a chance to perform. And here's what you do. You break down places for the enemy to have a foothold and he can't mess your relationship up. Does that make sense? Because if, we, if, if I did not recognize what was going on and took those iced teas out of the truck, we'd have had a bad day all day long. But when you know each other, you kind of get where I'm going. And you know that the goal is oneness. You don't allow stuff to fester. You address it the moment it happens. Does that make sense? Good. Anything you want to share? We'll wrap this up. We're well over time. And then we can end with this. Anything else at all? Yeah. Yeah, I just say, you know, we, we have to, in marriages, we have to not be afraid to have those type of conversations. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's simple, funny things like that. But... It was working me. I ain't gonna lie. It was working me all the way to the party, all the way home. I was like, I know he did not have me carry them five gallons Lord of, have mercy. of tea. And then he just in the car, just knocked out. And I was like, I'm tired. You know, then I started saying, okay, Katani, you know, he's just tired. He was up all night, da 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 da. But the other side of my brain was just like, you know, and it's just like I'm putting tick marks up. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I got something back for you, you know. And it's like oh we start tit for tatting because when we were arguing, I was like, do you have to come home and ask me, did you cook? You know, and then, and then we started yeah. going. And I was just like, 
Let you it know, go. we just yeah. got, we just have to yeah. let it go yeah. and just understand this is what I need from you. Yeah. And do the subtle reminders until it becomes a habit. Yes, that's it. Yeah. So if y'all see me not opening the door for her, say, Pastor G, get the door, man. Yeah. Last slide. Go to the next one. Let's wrap up with this as Pastor Vernon comes. Go to the next one. So here's on the importance of transparent communication in relationship. Number one, it closes the door from an enemies of your relationship who would tend to sow seeds of dissension. Okay? And this is critical because um, um, when we get to, we're still in Genesis, when we get to chapter 3 of Genesis, this is going to blow you away because we got some stuff to share in that Garden of Eden that will just mess you up. Okay? Two, it demonstrates incomparable trust. So here's what that means. I know my wife loves me. I know my wife trusts me. I know all that stuff. And so we can be transparent because we need, we're here for each other. Number three, it builds an authentic friendship between you and your spouse. Um, that's very, very important. Number four, it protects against infidelity. And number five, it serves as a tool for healing and conflict resolution. Does that make sense? Okay. So... In our relationship, my goal is this. This is always my best friend. Always. And I asked her last night, am I your dude? Yeah, and I'll fix your face when you say that, girl, yeah, yeah. We're done. Pastor Burns going to come. But here's one thing, last thing we want to share. Um, huh? One thing we want to share, then we'll stop. There's nothing conversation I have with my boys, so to speak, that I can't have with my wife. And I think the truth is, same is true the other way. There's no conversation she should have with her girls that she can't have with me. Amen. Where do you get that from, Felix? In the garden, Eve didn't have another girl to talk to. Adam didn't have another boy to talk to. They were naked. And they were unashamed. Pray for us. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Father. We thank you for this uh, teaching, Lord, um, as it is helping us grow, helping the congregation grow, Father God. Father, we want to be whole, Father God. We want to be healed. And as sensitive as this subject is in some of the marriage relationships in this body, God, Lord, we just ask that you will just open up their hearts just to hear, Lord. Uh, not to judge, not to look at each other, not to point fingers, Father God, to just get transparent before you, Lord. Yeah. Get real with you, Father God, because you're the only one, Lord, that has the power to heal, Father God. Father, you can change every situation here around, Lord, but it first comes with the dying of flesh, God. So, Father God, help us to understand as we walk through these valleys, Lord, that there is a mountaintop, Lord. Father God, that there is healing, there is hope in you, Father God. Father God, you just, don't, you just don't want us to hear this word, but you want us to ingest it, God. You want us to heal from it, Lord. You want to restore, Lord. This house is called Restoration for a Reason because of the miracle and the, of what you did in our marriage, God. And Father God, you want that to go out into the city, go out into this congregation, go out into the world to know that there is a hope and it is found in Jesus so, Father God, we pray priests, we pray um, understanding, we pray love over this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.